Hi, I'm Nick Stewart. And welcome to this tutorial. Which is about creating a colour wheel using four primary colour fountain pen inks. So from these primary colours, we're going to mix some secondary colours and some tertiary colours, which will give you the ability to create all future artwork just using this limited palette, which is great if you want to go art journaling and travel journaling. And it's also very, very useful if you want to do more finished artwork, like I'm doing here, painting this beautiful rooster. Look at all those lovely colours, and all from the four main primaries. Now with regards to choice of inks that you can use, it's important to remember that you will need a blue, a magenta, a yellow and a black. So whatever range you choose, ensure that those four main colours are available. I also recommend that the inks you use have a low chromatic behaviour, they react well with bleach, and they have a very limited sludge content. With regards to recommending brands, Robert Oster and Darmine are both excellent for this exercise, as is my own CMYK mix set, which was specifically made for this purpose for me to my own recipe by Darmin. Okay, so on with the tutorial. And what we see here are some color wheels that I have created. And you can use these too if you wish. I've made these into a PDF and you can download those from a link that will be provided in the show notes. So you can see there's two options here. We can use a wheel with 36 segments or a wheel with 18 segments. And for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm using the easy one. So the next thing we're gonna need is a brush. And I've chosen to use something called a rigger brush. Has got some very long, thin collection of hairs. And the reason I use this brush is because it gives me more control than using a shorter haired brush. The next thing we're gonna need is a mix tray. I've got a simple plastic one here with a series of dimples. And what I'm gonna do here is add the inks from the bottle with an eyedropper. And the reason why I do this is because I don't want the inks to cross contaminate. So I'm just going to take a couple of drops of each color and pop them into a dimple so that I can always get the three inks, which I'm using at the moment, from the mix tray. Now you're probably asking where the black ink is. Well, the black ink we're not using until a bit later because the majority of the wheel colors we're gonna be creating are from the cyan, the magenta, and the yellow. So here I am, I'm going into the first segment with the pure cyan blue. Now this is my own blue, it's called Berber Blue. It, it is based on a cyan, but it's got a tiny bit of chromatic behavior in it, which is what I wanted for what I want to do. Now the next color going in is the, is the red or the magenta. Mine is a little bit redder than a pure magenta, as you can see, those long hairs are giving me a nice degree of control over the painting. So I'm keeping within the lines, likewise with the yellow, nice lines. By the way, when you're doing a video like this and you've got a tiny little tripod, you don't have perfect access to, to the art, that's for sure. So this rigor really does come into its own. So there we are, those are the three primary colors. So that's now dry. I'm now gonna do my mixing on another piece of cartridge paper so I can get nearer to the primaries. And I'm guesstimating the first secondary. So I'm gonna make a purple, which is a mixture between the blue and the magenta. And I'm taking that middle segment just to put that freshly mixed color in there. So that is not a primary color. That is what we call a secondary color because it's a color we've made from the two primary colors. I also use that spare bit of cartridge paper to rest my hand on so that I'm not going to upset the artwork in any way underneath. So I'm now mixing a little bit of that color that I just created with a little bit more blue and I'm going in to put that into the segment next to the blue. And as we finish off that segment, I think you can see that with that little bit of extra, with that little tiny bit of purple in there, it's just deepened the color 
tonally as well as altering the colour. And that's another secondary colour there. So we're going to do the same again with the colour that we want next to the primary red. We just, I just added a tiny bit of blue in there and that just makes it into a, a very dull crimson. But as you can see, you know, they, the, the, color, the secondary colours are mixing well and they've got a nice even coverage and they're still very vibrant. So the next colour I'm mixing up is uh, on the blue side and it's going to be a little bit more red in it. That's quite a deep purple. Once again, that's another secondary colour we've created there. And we're just going to fill in that last segment there between those two primaries with our last secondary colour. And don't forget, if you were to choose the um, 36 segmented wheel, you're going to get a far finer variation in colour with a lot more secondaries created. So here we go for the next section, which is the colors in between the yellow and the red. So we're starting off with a guesstimate orange. And as you can see, that's, that's turned out to be a really nice, rich color there. It's going down really well. And once again, with that rigor, I've got a nice lot of control there. Bearing in mind, I've got my arm pokey through a tripod trying to get those colours in position. And we wait for that to dry, and then we can make our next secondary colour, which is the transition between the yellow and the orange. So again, it's, it's, it's another secondary colour created. And all these colours created so far um, are all from just mixing two colours together we're just varying the concentrations. Yeah, you can see that my arm position wasn't brilliant there getting through that tripod and I have gone over the lines a little bit, but. But what I found quite encouraging about using fountain pen ink is that it goes down very, very flat. It's almost got a gouache type quality. Um, when you're doing a color wheel with uh, watercolors which are pigment based not dye based you can see quite a lot of the pigment and the uh, which can give rise to uh, an uneven finish when it dries so you are seeing these colors go down quite flat one other thing that you you you'll find that if you do try this exercise using other mediums is that you won't get all of the, the, the three segment areas, the three main segment areas between the primaries. You may well find that some of the colors are quite dull and that in actual fact, when you're using uh, other mediums, particularly watercolor, you may need to use two different types of yellow, two different types of blue and two different types of magenta to make keep the colors vibrant. So each of that, those three sectors are using different combinations. So you end up using six colors as opposed to three primaries. That's a big difference when you're you between um, watercolor and using fountain penning. So here we go, I'm doing this last section here, which is the blue primary and the yellow primary, in which we know they make green, but in between those colors, we can also see where these gorgeous tear links that we love come from. And the thing is, as you get more proficient at creating these secondary colors, you can identify these colors within the color ranges of inks that you buy into. Which does ask the question, if you want to make your own inks, you now have, or you will very shortly have the confidence in order to make those colors yourself.
And as I said, when it comes to painting, um, from my own experience, it's just so much easier to actually create your own colours as opposed to having to dip your pen into 70 or different coloured inks. You're just making all the colours yourself out of the four. As you can see, I'm just using that cartridge paper for my mixing. Okay, it's on a small scale, I, I, I grant you. But even so, you're not using an awful lot of product here and it's going in really well. And it's working really well on this cartridge paper. What I will say is if you wanna give this a go on um, some more high quality watercolor paper, obviously you will need to draw the wheel up yourself. Uh, the quality of the inks just improves substantially and you'll see this very soon on the video. So there we are, that is now dry. And what I'm doing now, there's a little bit of black ink in there. That's the twilight black of mine. Um, it's quite gray. I, I've, I've watered it down quite a bit. And I'm just using this as a tint, just on the inside of the wheel, just to show you how that black can work. So I'm just using this as a tint. So if you're looking for to apply shadows to your paintings, this is how you do it. It's just a case of watering that black down and applying it over the top. So you're still seeing the colour coming through, but what you're doing is um, you're adding a little bit of a shade or a tint there. In effect, what we're doing is we are creating a tertiary colours on that inner, inner circle because as you see the colours underneath coming through, They've obviously been affected by the black that we're laying over the top and they become unique colours in their own right. And as it's got three colours in there, they're now known as tertiary colours. And you can see that tint will affect each secondary colour in a different way. So that's what we're using the black for in this particular case. We're using it for some modelling. So we're giving um, it means that if we are working on a painting, we can give that painting some depth by adding this, uh, this grey tint. And of course you can vary that grey tint in depth as well by adding more water or using less water. Now what I'm doing here is I'm finding the centre point of the wheel. And what I'm going to do is grab a compass in a minute. For some of you technical drawing experts, you've probably got something a little bit more, shall we say, appropriate than I have, but I'm just making up a very quick uh, device to, to draw a circle with a, a dip pen. Don't forget when using bleach, you must always use a dip pen, or if you're gonna paint with bleach, use synthetic brushes. And I'm literally just going to test this now by drawing a circle in bleach onto the wheel just to make sure that it's, it's reacting well with the colours, and it is. So there you have it. We, it's great to see the bleach is working through all of those primary and secondary and tertiary colours, which is excellent, because it means that we can use that as, as a highlighter, we can um, take colour away if we've made a mistake. And of course, we've, as you can see, in some of those lovely areas there, we've even got a neon glow. So that's perfect. So if I then bring through one that I've created on a watercolour paper, you can see that the colours are more vibrant and work beautifully. Now, at the bottom of your templates, you will see that I've given you nine little blocks, which I want you to use because this is how we're going to use, um, first of all, the black. Okay, so we're gonna use the black with a primary have a look here, I'm just adding a bit of black in there and you can see that I'm getting some browns out of that. That beautiful black fountain pen ink is, is creating those beautiful browns. Now, I'm gonna hold this frame for a little bit because I want to talk about each color and we're gonna start with the top left, which is the red, the magenta, mixed with the black. And as you can see, we're getting some fantastic qualities here. The next one in the middle is the yellow and the black, which you can see some browns coming out of it. You can see some deep greens. So if you want to create your own ochres for watercolor painting, all of that is possible. 
And of course, because you are using a fountain pen ink, not just pure yellow, you can see that we've inherent within the quality of the ink that I created, we've got some really beautiful, rich cadmium yellows and oranges at the edges with the standard cadmium going into canary yellows in the middle and then blending into that black. We've got some browns in there. We've got some greys in there and we've got some blacks in there. So out of two colours, I mean, that's just incredible. If you were doing that in watercolour, you would need two yellows, a brown ochre and a black. So that's incredible what we've got out of Phantom Inks. That's quite unique. So looking at the top right, we're looking at a tertiary green that we created and just adding a little bit of black there. You can see that we're getting some deep olives in there. We're getting some deep grey greens and we've also got a tiny bit of brown in there as well. Beautiful. Now on that middle layer, if we look on the left hand side, we're just adding black there to the blue. We're getting a very strange effect there because the blacks almost become grey. So when you do add a black to the cyan or the blue, you are going to get some different effects and you can see that is really quite pleasing. And to the right of that, I've added a purple, which we made, which is a, uh, a secondary color. And then we then added the black to it, to a tertiary color. And that is giving you almost a sheen effect. On the bottom left, I've got another secondary color, which we created, which was that deep orange. We've added the black to it on the left hand side and you can see that it's gone deep brown. And to the right hand side, I've added a little bit of red. In the middle, I've used the cyan and all I've added is water. So you can see the range, light blue, all the way to the pure, the pure blue. So if you're looking to make colors lighter, it's not a case of adding white paint, we just add more water. So please don't forget that. And the final color there is that red and I've just added it to some water and you can see some very subtle pinks coming through. So there we have it. I hope that's enough for you to be cracking on with. All, this, all the information that you need with regards to templates and equipment will be in the show notes. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section and I'll do my best to get back to you. So thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And I look forward to seeing what you produce in the very near future. Bye for now.